you know what? Where pop culture reigns supreme. With too many podcasts and unsolicited opinions, two friends brave the storm to give you just that. Room 303 presents Revenge of the Pod. With your hosts, the Mexican meat connoisseur, Jason Escudero, the Puerto Rican nerd aficionado, Luigi Orozco, on with the show. Welcome, mis saludos amigos, to Revenge of the Pod, presented by Room 303. Uh... I know it's a little weird, y'all. I got some uh, very special guests with me. Uh, shout out JC. Shout out Eric. Uh, Ouija is pretty busy finishing up with the school. Uh, usually he's not free around this time because kids, right, guys? Um, <laughs> uh, just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Getting busy with the end of the school year. So, uh, But uh, we got a lot of stuff to catch up on you uh, with you guys. Uh, so we're in for a really good episode today. Uh, but before we get do start on that, uh, what's up, guys? What y'all been up to? Uh, I'll start with uh, you, Jermaine. What's up, man? How you been? Uh, I've been chilling, man. I've been catching up on shows that everyone I, – I finished binging One Piece. Started in <laughs> September. Took me all the way to March to finish 1,100 episodes. Now I'm going weekly, so I had the time to catch up on the other shows. So I, I watched Shogun, X-Men, Bad Batch, you know. The hits, pretty much, but that's you know, what and, uh, and uh, I mean, you're being a little modest right now, right? One Piece, how many episodes is that currently up to date? 11, 11, 06, 1106. That is insane, like 30 minute <laughs> episodes, right? They're a little less than that, and also, like, you you fast forward through the intro and the outro, so it's okay, yeah, yeah. They're well, like 20, uh, 20 minute episodes, but it's still, I think if you calculate it, it's like three weeks. It's 22,120 minutes. That yeah, is, <laughs> I think, I think I, cause I did the math with my buddy the other day, my buddy Barb, and uh, I think it ended up being like three weeks of television, which is kind of sad to say out loud. <laughs> I mean, it's all it's all good. I mean, I I, I did a whole binge with. Um, it's probably not as much, but uh, uh, the whole uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, Jamie and I knocked that out in like a month and a half, and uh, it like consumed our time, but it was worth it. So, from what I hear, uh, this is pretty worth it too, right? You say you almost cried in a few episodes. Almost, nah, dude. That show's sad as fuck. <laughs> well, yeah, you my, you, you, you my boy Chopper, dude. didn't want to watch that live action, you know. The li- if you don't really like the live action, don't watch the anime. The live action isn't bad, but it's not better than the anime. It never is. Never is. Yeah. They did a- they did a very good job though. I will say like in engaging the spirits of the characters and like they did a good job for sure. Hell yeah. Eric, you haven't watched either. How do you know? I watched 3 episodes of the live action and I have watched a a large amount of no, One Piece. I've have, seen at least 500 episodes. You have not. We've seen you. like two. Eric Eric likes to do this. My bad. Loves to say that he's seen something when it's on like the background. His his head can be. Uh, well, I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> he's like, I've seen it. He walks in, sees two minutes of the episode. He's like, that counts as one episode, bro. It does. I partook. <laughs> you get If you play in an NBA game for one minute, you played in an NBA game. So I that get is, credit. That is not the same thing as it's watching thing a television world. show. Same thing in my world. So I, I lived with Eric in the past too, and uh, I've seen him watch shows. And sometimes it's like, it's like you're, it's like a, you know, when you really like a movie and like you're like, hey, let me show you this movie, and you want them to sit down and you're watching it together, and like that person's like looking at their phone the whole time. I feel like that's what Eric does. Like he's at, he has that on the side while he's working or just doing something else. I'm like, bro, he has it, when he's working, he has it on. And then he's like, yeah, I've seen that. I'm like, dog, you've seen everything. And then you ask him a question. He's like, what'd you think of this? He's like, when did that happen? <laughs> like, yeah. 
I got the gist of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's the gist of it. Yeah, I the gist. Yeah. Yeah. There's some other shows that where he like gets really in depth in it, into it. And I was like, did this dude like watch that shit like four times in a row? Because probably sounds like he was like, uh, let me watch that because I was watching it, but I wasn't paying attention. So like he grasped <laughs> more of it. I feel like that's what happens. Um, certain ones, certain ones, but he usually puts on his Chicago Fires. Hey, hey, you respect <laughs> Chicago One, dude. You respect, nah, you respect on that shit. Fam, get nah, out of whole- listen, if Law and Order can survive for 28 years, Chicago One can. Chicago Vers should be killed. It's- well, I mean, yeah, spe- speaking of Chicago, uh, yo, Eric, uh, what you been up to, brother? Uh, nothing in Chicago, but uh, just chilling, man. Uh, you brought up Game of Thrones, which may, uh, I actually binged it again uh, with the rents. I was back home. And uh, my dad was talking about House of the Dragon season two coming out. And I don't know how it came to the conversation, but he never finished Game of Thrones. He stopped at like game season five. So I was like, no, no, no. So we went back and binged it about two weeks. My parents were tired. They just sit there all day and watch TV. So, you know, but uh, and then I'm back on I'm back on Entourage. Cole sent me a bunch of memes uh, and a bunch of clips from Entourage, like of Ari going off. So I'm actually more like in a. A rerun right now than I am anything new. I, I have some new stuff queued up, but I'm kind of just enjoying going back and watching some of the classics. Uh, the, uh have you seen uh, House of Dragon season one? Yeah, yeah, I went with parents too. Yeah, I went back and watched it with them. Oh, okay. Oh, so what, what did your dad think about the end of like end of season Game of Thrones? The the last seasons. Yeah. What do you think he, about that? He liked it. He um he's not as invested as a lot of people are. You know, a lot of people spent. You know, ten years watching that show develop and get to the end. So for him to just binge it, it wasn't as much of a travesty as it was for a lot of other people. But he liked it. He liked the way he, you know, he liked who got, you know, he liked the way that it wasn't just the the what everybody thought was going to happen at the end. He was a big fan gotcha. of that. So yeah, yeah. Honestly, I kind of feel the same same way. To be honest, um, like I didn't invest with it like every like oh, I have to wait for this season. So like I was able to binge watch everything and. Yeah, you know, like I feel like the last two seasons were kind of rushed, but like I wasn't really mad with the ending, I guess. Well, the um, thing is, is the last six, season six, seven, eight were all they they weren't going off the books because it was just seven, eight, eight, wasn't it? it? No, six, seven, eight. Six, seven, so eight. Okay. The last thing that's in the books, the last book. Oh, I shouldn't say certain things. Um, no, 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 wanna... you, yeah, you can, you can ruin it, dude. It's been a long time ago. Oh, for, okay. All right, fuck it. So spoilers in the book. We already went over this. John yeah, Snow is still dead. Uh, uh, the second Baratheon son, the one that jumps out the window, is not dead. Cersei's never been queen. There's a whole lot of shit that hasn't happened in the book. So, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of shit that they kind of just improv to to finish the show because. Dude, it's been 14 years since the last dude wrote the, since the dude wrote the last book. So we don't know. He might die. He's like 79 years old. He might die before we get the next book. He's not finishing it. Yeah. I don't think he's finishing. Yeah. Well, so we got the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, anything you want to add on on that, Jermaine? I, I, you were about to say something, but we uh, cut you off on that. My bad. No, I was just saying everyone who got mad at Game of Thrones, they had they everyone who got mad pre-wrote the ending and said it should end like this it should be john snow that and should be in a show that we had zero happy endings it with for eight seasons <laughs> they got mad because they got an unhappy ending i was just like what did you think was gonna happen it was war it was like there's a i'm pretty sure that i maybe i'm paraphrasing now because it's been so long but I, one of the lines is like nobody wins in in the game of thrones like Nobody sure wins. That's, right, that's yeah. the whole point of Game of Thrones. It's a bunch of egotistical maniacs fighting for power, and all of them fail miserably, and then it fails. Like, and they I kind just, of show that in the beginning, right? With uh, Ed, Edard Stark, right? Like he's the most probably humble dude, like the most uh, most noble person. And when he gets killed off in season one, he refused to play the game, though. Exactly. But like, again, like, and it kind of just shows foreshadows, like of like if you want to be a part of if you want power and you want all this stuff you kind of have to play the game and you have to be corrupt and all this stuff like it's just so strange um everybody tried and they failed that's what it was the ones who didn't try are the ones who ended up like surviving at the end the longest yeah, yeah. or like or fucked over people you know like it's just 
that's just the way it was the game of thrones but yeah uh well yeah uh coming up uh season two house of dragon uh i'm excited for it the teasers have been pretty sweet although i only watched the first teaser trailer and after that i was just like i'm not watching any of it because um i'm kind of in the same boat as you jermaine like uh e even with a deadpool that's coming out this year uh, i only watched the first teaser i, I don't want to watch any more trailers i don't want to ruin it anymore because i feel like trailers like you are you are right they kind of ruin it for you for the most part like you're giving me too much bro like stop just give me a little teaser i don't want to see any characters in there it's especially if you're watching or listening to this podcast obviously we we've deep dive this stuff way too much right so you exactly if you give us a little easter egg we're gonna be able to be like oh that means xyz we, we're gonna see this and you'll notice that later when we get to x-men 97 we're not like, Mar oh. yeah well yeah although marvel has been cock teasing us uh, uh mephisto right so <laughs> bro that was i honestly the fact that he never showed up actually made I'm like, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's hysterical to me now. I t I tell my brother all the time because one thing, him and I have always done this. Like whenever we get into something, we're always trying to we always try to predict. And he's gotten toxic with it lately. Like where he just like comes up with random wild concept after wild concept after wild co concept for whatever whatever universe or world we're talking about. I'm just like, oh yeah. And then Mephesto shows up anytime he tells me something. I'm just <laughs> like, that's not happening, dog. <laughs> yeah, I do that with Luigi too. When we're talking about like just some random shit. Doesn't even have to be in the Marvel universe. Like, and then Mephesto, Mephesto shows up, bro. But yeah. Yeah, <laughs> lately I've been doing that with, with One Piece because my brother is just like, off the deep end, bro. Totally like, all these I was just like, bro, we nobody knows what Ichiro Oda is thinking, bro. Like, stop trying. Stop. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, uh, there's one thing I do actually want to talk about just because they announced uh, they're going to renew season two and season three. I don't think Luigi and I actually had a chance to talk about the final episode of Shogun. Uh, so I definitely want to talk about that. Jermaine, I know you just finished watching that. Um, yeah, like an hour ago. Yeah, so uh, I guess what were your thoughts of the final episode, man? Uh, I definitely want to talk about it, too. Uh, what do you think uh, as, as far as the whole series goes? First of all, the series was great. The series was great. The acting, phenomenal. Set design, phenomenal. The, the overhead shots to show the nature of Japan, fantastic. Casting, fantastic. The way they weave that story was fantastic. I was uh, – obviously, spoilers, but I was probably – I was pretty shocked that we didn't get any like big action thing. battle, right? Yeah, big battle. But the dude speaks to it essentially with the script, right? Whoever wrote the script speaks to it at the end when he's having that he's having that discourse with old buddy, uh, Yash Yashibige. Yeah, uh, and he's telling him like, yeah, uh, Yabu Yabushige. Yeah, she get yeah. So yeah. he they're having that discourse on the on the mountain cliff at the end, and he basically tells him like, "I figured you would have known, right? I figured you of all people, you've known me long enough that you would have known what had happened." And then he like explains to him, and I'm like, "Dang, that's pretty hard." Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the last and then, so and then the way everyone was like talking about it in chats because I was still on episode three when everyone was like getting hype about the renewal. And they were like, yo, Tornaga signed on. He signed. I was just like, I finished it now. And I was just like, why was that ever a, a doubt of him not signing on? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, Luigi kind of speaks to it. Like it's, it's roughly based off of like the history of Japan and stuff. And um, the uh, Lord Toronaga is actually based off a, a different name of another Shogun, like in the past. So they try to change the name. So we wouldn't like know exactly, right. If you knew the history. Um, but yeah, um, and like the way they predict of like what's gonna happen, it's kind. Of, it was kind of a shame that we didn't get to see the battle, uh, because like you're you're you spent so much money on this series, like let us see the battle, bro. Like uh, the main character, his name is a uh, Hariyoki Sanada. That dude was Scorpion in Mortal Kombat. Yeah. That fool knows how to fight. Like he is a great choreography in fighting, and we barely saw him fight. So no, like I never had to, never had to lift yeah, a finger. Never, never had to. Right, it makes yeah, his character even better, dude. Exactly. He's a badass, but I was like, come on, man. How are you teasing us? Like a dude who's like known for his choreograph, his, his, his stunts in fighting. And we <laughs> barely see him fight, which Bro. is kind of like a little tease. I think that was like my only takeaway from, from this series, 
But the fact that they renewed it for season two and season three, I have a feeling like it's kind of like, all right, we're going to see the big battle soon. Maybe even if it doesn't lead to this battle that's coming up, because we kind of know what's going to happen. Um, I do love that uh, when Mariko sacrificed herself um, was kind of like her, especially when she reached out to her childhood friend uh, saying that like, hey, we should finish that poem for me someday, right? Uh, it was kind of a hint of, of her telling like, hey, we still want you on our side. And she finished the poem, send it over to Toranaga and saying like, hey, when this day comes, my people are not going to fight alongside your enemies. We're going to go alongside you. And I thought that was pretty epic without having to say, have them talking to each other. It was just kind of a, like a, oh shit, like we understand this because of the poem, because of like what we knew. And I thought that was pretty epic. Like if, if you were paying attention throughout the whole series, well, through, within those last couple episodes, you kind of see like, we are going to be in alliance and not, I'm not going to be in alliance with them anymore, which I thought was pretty, pretty sweet and how they did that. Um, just really good story building on that. And I love the load those last two episodes. Uh, Eric, did you watch uh, Shogun by chance? The first five episodes. Oh, okay. It's fine. It's fine. I don't, I, I'm still going to watch it. I did it. You know how I am. I, I watched yeah. it. I'll watch, and then I'm going to watch it and then I'm going to watch it again five more times. So, um, but one thing you said, just, just so that, um, I don't know if you know this, but, uh, some historian for some school, I don't know. I don't know the details, but he scored it at 90% accuracy. As really? far as, as far as, obviously they changed the names and stuff, but as far as like how they set it up with I the clans and what they were battling for and like the turmoil and the traitors and stuff like that, it was, he said it was about 90% accurate, obviously with the name changes, but, um, and it was a cool article. Luigi could talk about this and we don't have to get into this on this show, but apparently, um, it's like the first, uh, the way he was describing it is basically it was like the first, um, form of capitalism in the world was the what is it the british indian oh east company india east east, east indian trading company east yeah. indian trading company was like the first form of capitalism and it really hit india and japan like were one of the first uh it was pretty cool to read like it's how capitalism really kind of spread from there so but 90 percent accuracy on accuracy on everything else for that show so they did a good job and now the, did you guys uh watch the dub version or the sub version I watched it in English. I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the dub, yeah. So um, there's a so if you go on Hulu because this show's on Hulu, um, if you go like normal, right? If you just click play, it's gonna be the sub, uh, version where it's mostly if they're speaking Japanese, uh, they're gonna be in Japanese. But if you go to the dub version, if it's two Japanese people talking to each other, they're gonna they're gonna dub it in English. Um, oh gonna, no, I watch. Sorry, I watch sub, sub, subtitles. Sub, sub, so you guys sub. subtitles? Yeah. yeah. Um, it voice actors were actually really great too. So um, the only time that um, they spoke English uh, when I watched it, because I watched the version, was when uh, Blackthorn was speaking to like um, uh, Tornaga, right? And so we could know that they were talking to each other in English and Japanese. But when it it when there was only Japanese uh, uh, speaking, um, it was in English, um, and they had subtitles on the bottom, uh, which I I liked it. Personally, uh, Luigi said he's been watching the subtitles too, uh, but um, just a little bit easier because I liked watching like the the, the face acting, right? So uh, I personally liked it, and I thought the act uh, the voice acting was great on the English because uh, the Squid Games was terrible. I don't know if you guys saw Squid Games. I've never awful, seen that. Awful dub acting, bro. Awful. Like the <laughs> voice acting was just awful. Like I hope they uh, they renewed it for season two, and I hope they get better voice actors because it was just. <laughs> Terrible, dude. Terrible. It like took me out of it. That's why you should just do the subtitles, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It, it wasn't bad, but we we tried it for an episode, and we're like, all right, let's see how these are these voice actors going to piss me off, and they didn't. They actually did a really good job. So shout out to those voice actors. Um, and it was good, man. Um, but yeah, uh, season two and three renewed officially. So we don't really have release dates yet, but uh, I guess the success of it and people really watched it, so we're gonna get to see it. Maybe they do a prequel or maybe later down. There's a lot of history to tell within the 1600s of Japan. Uh, I don't know a lot about it, so but I am excited. Uh, I thought the acting was phenomenal. So one, one of my favorite shows this year, for sure. Like you said, you expected a, a lot more action and you never got that big battle here in this season. Um, 
I, I just like to go and read about stuff. So um, I don't know the exact dates, but this led to the longest dynasty from like the 1600s to the 1800s. Yeah. So yeah. it's the next seasons are probably going to be, you know, like him taking over Japan. You know, so there might be more action, or they might just keep it the same. Who knows? Like where that where the action is referred to and implied, but never seen, which it works, dude. It works. Like yeah, it, it does the uh, the Edo time period. This is leading up to the Edo time period. Yeah, when and that's when Edo becomes the capital of Japan, which is alluded to at the end of it. Um, but yeah, it's got a lot of rich history. I, Luigi obviously is more of a dork about this than me. I, I'm into fictional history. Luigi's got the real world history. <laughs> Our powers combined, we got it all though. Uh, no, I thought it was sick. I thought everyone they casted was awesome. I, I even the dude, uh, what's his, what, what did I call him? Budget Vigo Mortensen. <laughs> no idea, bro. Blackthorn. Blackthorn, bro. <laughs> Oh, Blackthorn, yeah, yeah. He, he's a budget. I, I call him budget somebody. I don't think it's Vigo, but he looks like somebody. But like budget the, Tom Hardy, if anything. Like the knockoff version. No, he doesn't look He like talks Tom too much Hardy. to be Tom Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> well, so this – I do. So one thing I'm hoping is that they give him a bigger budget. So I, that, that was kind of my thing is like they didn't show as many things like when the bandits attacked Sugiyama, right? They had him standing there right there. And I was just like, all right, you give us a little quick skirmish. Nah, they just like overhead shot a bunch of dead bodies. And I was just like, oh, okay. So like hopefully with the six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and my thing is whenever stuff like that happens, like from a director point of view, you're like, how can I film this What without having to film this, right? And so they're like, how can I save money? Um, but I thought it was an excellent show. Excellent show. I, I'm I'm excited for seasons two and three. Um, I do want to shout out uh, um, uh, Blackthorn's, uh, I guess, a, a assigned mistress. I want to say mistress. Consort. Again, consort. consort. Um, I liked her end of her story, like right where she's like, I am no longer going to be yours. I decided to give myself to to the faith and be become a nun. Um, but like just everything that she did for him, like, especially like in the first episode where, um, her baby gets killed and her husband, you know, has to sacrifice himself because he disrespected, uh, you know, the leaders. So she becomes a widow and has to become, uh, the white demons mistress, pretty much a consort. And like, just like her, like, again, like she had like no action and stuff like that, but like just her willingness to obey Torunaga and then also um, uh, the Ajin son, Blackthorn, and uh, building that relationship with him. I freaking loved her character. Like, I don't know. She was like one of my favorites. Like, she just grew on me. Like, and just like, just, I guess, just because from when episode one until like the very end, I was like, I love, she like grew on me a lot. And like, she became one of my favorite characters. Yeah, and she's hot. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I just I had to say all oh, oh, I thought all of them were hot. I was like, yo, I might be really into Japanese women. I already knew that. <laughs> uh dude, Nag Nago uh Nagakota. Bro, I never cheered so much for a good guy's death. Damn. In my life. I, I hated that dude. I gotta catch up. I hated that dude, bro. Talk about uh talk about um Tornaga's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, oh, the way he died too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Seppuku? Oh, don't, no, say no, no. don't say yeah, it. Don't say it. We won't say it. <laughs> we did talk about it in, in, the, in one of our last episodes. So, you know, our, our, our listeners can go back and listen to that. But, yeah, it was um, – yeah, he was kind of annoying, man. Like, dude, like, listen to your dad, bro. But, like, hey, I mean, we're all at that point, right, where we don't listen to our father? He was the worst, bro. I, I was just like – this she got it. I was like, this dude's got to go. Like he's got to go away. He had the worst decision making. It was. It's like all the characters in Je the gentleman. Every dude, single right? character in the gentleman. Good lord! I think that's part of the reason why I'm slowly going through it. The, the TV show. They're so <laughs> fucking dumb, bro. This. Yeah, you're right. I'm four episodes in, and I'm like frustrated with every you, decision made. You, you know how I just. I'm just an, naturally an anxiety real filled like riddled person. Watching that show, I binged it with my rents. Watching that show 
the stoner dude gave me uncontrollable anxiety, dude. <laughs> like, if I was the OG running the show, I would have put a bullet in the back of his head. The I couldn't handle dude. it. That's funny. Yeah, I couldn't handle it, bro. I would have shot him. I'm like, dude, I that love dude you. Reminded me of you, you got to go. No, oh, I'm not that dumb. <laughs> that I'm dumb. Dude. I'm not that dumb. That dumb. Uh, Freddie, <laughs> right? That's definitely Freddie. Okay. <laughs> bro. Well, so I, I, honestly, I, I don't actually know what he does in that, but I so I don't know all the dumb stuff he does, but I did see him lose the van. Oh, bro, it gets worse. <laughs> and dude. I was like, Duh. it gets so much worse with that dude, man. But it was a great show. You should finish it. No, I plan on. I dude, first of all, the show is good. Like, yeah. don't don't get me wrong. Yes, it, am I annoyed with every character's decision making process in that show? Absolutely, <laughs> it's pure chaos. Like, there's not a smart person in sight. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I left off with. Um, I'm assuming it's uh, Gus from Breaking Bad, uh, but I don't know yet. And he's uh, the one, Giancarlo he's, Esposito. Yeah. And he's the one working with the chick who stole the car, and he, they throw a lighter into the into the van of weed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Dog, you, you're not even gonna sell that!" Like, ah, dude, I was so annoyed. But then there's this dude like wearing a black hat, and I was like, "I'm pretty sure that's Sean Carlo." Bro, at um, least sit by the yeah, van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, I was glad you, up, dude. You pinpointed that very well. Uh, well, uh, actually, I want to get into the gentleman. So this is a nice little segue. But before, I just want, kind of wanted to, would you give a rating for uh, Shogun overall? Um, would you say, uh, I know you're not finished with Eric, so I'm just, I, I, I'm asking uh, Jermaine on this one. Oh, I'll so, give you a rating. I very rarely give nines to television shows, uh, but I'm going to give this one a nine too. Uh, I'm uh, honestly exactly the same, nine two as well. Hey, uh, hey copy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, dude it was great uh but yeah dude i'm glad you guys brought up gentlemen because that was actually the next show i want to talk about so this is great we can definitely get into that segue into that uh, i finished the whole series myself um and you're right i'm sorry freddie is the brother the idiot in the chicken suit you guys were talking about <laughs> Bro, you guys were talking about the stoner dude uh when the one that comes, when it comes up when it, no, sorry freddie's jimmy dude he's not the brother S sorry when when the brother comes out with the shotgun in the chicken suit, I am like, <laughs> like, what are you doing, bro? Got me hooked. Oh, like instantly oh. after that episode, I was like, well, we gotta, we gotta keep watching this, you know. <laughs> it's a very good, it's a very good show, but my god, the thought process is so bad, dude. Uh, but yeah, you are right, dude. Every literally every character is like, what the hell are you guys doing, like? What the fuck, bro? Um, I'll let you guys James. go into it. You guys, yeah, have, you guys both seen it, right? Yeah. Yes, we have. Yeah. All uh, right. So I'll let you guys get into like the ending and stuff. Don't worry about spoilers. Like I don't mind on this one because yeah, I'm that frustrated with these people. So just tell me how dumb they are. <laughs> uh, honestly, man, not much to it. It kind of just keeps going on. Like uh, the, uh, the best way to put it, Jermaine, is – uh, there's going to be about 25 more plot twists before the show ends. <laughs> Every episode, there's 15 to 20 plot twists, dude. It's out of control. Like one one minute, you're like, they're working together. One minute, they're trying to kill each other. The next minute, they're back to working together. Then some hot chick pops up for five seconds to distract you. And then a whole other plot twist happened. It's just like, what the f*** is going on? Dude, they jumped through all those hoops to save that kid who saw them, right? Yeah. And then... Um... <laughs> she had the dude on the boat with him. Yeah. And I was just like, damn, y'all did all that work. And she was just going to kill him anyways. The dude that fixes problems, oh, right? It's crazy. Oh, my bro. God. Yeah. I was just like, yo, just kill him up front. And then they doesn't have to go into his apartment or any. Oh, my goodness. I, uh, I do have a question. I know it's a, based off of Guy Ritchie's movie, The Gentleman, right? Um. Have you guys seen that one? Um, I love, heard it kind of love that movie. Love that. Does movie. it kind of relate to it in some way? Because I isn't John Carlos Esposito in that one as well? No, no, I don't or, think so. Oh no, the brother is Freddie uh, Daniel Ings, right? He's in it. I don't think so, actually. I'm. I'm the plot is similar. The I think plot is similar. I think it's in. It's like in a uh, in a world that he's created. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know what I mean? But I don't think they, I don't think they, because Matthew, Matthew McConaughey being the main character is right. American in the show. Right. And nobody here is American. So I think it might just be, 
or maybe yes. Matthew McConaughey comes in and buys the operation. Like, cause well, John Carlos Mosito is from America. So like, is he, does he have ties with, with, with the people from America or, or is maybe movie? like, you know, cause it doesn't really, doesn't really work out for him. So oh, okay. maybe, maybe Matthew McConaughey's character comes down later down the road and the brother that comes, that comes to save the family. Like he, uh, I guess gets control and then he partners with them and then that's how they grow it or something. But um, I don't think it, I don't think they correlate with each other. Cause like I was looking for it. I was looking for it in the show. Cause I love the movie and I didn't, I just didn't see it. No, okay. Okay. Daniel Ings isn't Daniel Ings isn't in uh, the movie. He's no. not. Okay. Okay. No. Yeah. I guess I was reading the cast list wrong, but um, they, yeah, so they when you, when you Google it, it shows kind of com, com everything combined. So it's, gotcha. mis it's misleading. Gotcha. Yeah, then that, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, uh, I thought Susie Glass's character was dope. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, her and uh, Eddie, uh, the main character, like their like bond is pretty cool. Like you just feel that sexual tension from the beginning, although they can't, right? Um, just because they're they work with each other. Um, yeah, man, I, and I think uh, they're in talks about renewing for a season two as well. I think uh, it so already has been renewed. Yeah, it has. Yeah, for season two. I, at one point, there's gypsies. There's all. There's always gypsies in a in a in a Guy Ritchie film. But they did a great job, bro. And yeah, then the there's another plot twist with them, dude. It's just every. It's just plot twist after plot twist after plot twist, man. It was excellent. Like, I um. Uh, the but we got to talk about the chicken suit. I, I just gotta ask you guys this: Your life's on the line. You doing the chicken suit thing, or are you just screw it? Oh, I, I, kill him or die here. I'm about to be the best goddamn chicken you ever seen. Dude. What the fuck? That's a no brainer. Are you kidding me? Yeah, dude. Okay, now, now, now. There's that thing, but like he was doing, he was doing the thing, right? But it's like, you know, you're not doing it great enough. Like fucking do it. Like having to do it con consistently is like I'm doing a fucking great job. But yeah. uh, we've been in theater, so I think we feel like we. I, th I feel like we do a great job. Whatever, man. Put put your ego aside, dude. Like you're you're. Your your brother just settled a four million debt, a four That's million dollar debt. Saying. I just saved a bunch of money. Like I just saved a bunch of money, and all I have to do is dance in a chicken suit and record it. All right, bet no problem, dude. Yeah. My, my pride is not. It's but like what what pride? What pride? It could have been worse, right? Like <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> No, nah, I'm good, dude. Yeah, I'm I'm about to be. I'm about you about to not tell the difference between me and a chicken, dude. That's how yeah, man, I'm uh, doing it, dude. Yeah, overall, I think the acting was pretty great. Every character uh, did phenomenal. Um, I don't really have any qualms about it, other than uh, he, uh, characters kind of pissed me off. Uh, <laughs> that was the. I think it was the point, though. But it's right, like, yeah, yeah. oh, I'm with um, you, though, dude. God, you kind of see like Eddie like being transitioned into like, oh shit, maybe I am about this life. You know, he's like, get the fuck out of my property. I want to get out of this and realize like. I'm I'm pretty good at this. I think <laughs> he liked it too much. Yeah, from the beginning, like, dude. that power is. I like that power. You know, I get it. I get it. So uh, it, it's awesome, man. Every episode is very unique, uh, which you love to see. So hopefully, um, season two is just as good, uh, and uh, give us more plot twists and more dumb people. So, <laughs> Eric, are you doing the chicken suit? Yeah, I think I would. I think I would. I'd have to, I'd have you, what, my big brother would have to like, you know, you know, or whoever I'd have to, say, I'd have to be talked into it. Like my pride would be like, fuck that. That's why my, like, my inclination I'm bowing up on this motherfucker, oh, but my inclination yeah. was Eric would be like, fuck that. I ain't doing that. Fuck <laughs> it. He's just going to blow the whole thing. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought it would be. Dude. Nah, but 2.0 Eric, Eric would do it. No, nah, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not as prideful as 1.0 Eric. <laughs> Well, overall, what would you guys give it? Uh, I know you're you're not finished with it yet, right, Jermaine? You said that. I'm about uh, halfway. Would, I'm about what would you give it, Eric? Uh, I'd probably do like an eight point four. Yeah, I'd give it more like a eight point six. Um, I, I, really I, I might it. even go lower just because some of the characters are so frustrating. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like they're it's just, doing their job. <laughs> it's a, it's like the whole. Oh my god, dude! It was. I guess you're right. Like it's it's well written because, <laughs> but a show shouldn't give me this much anxiety. Like, why are you doing this? You need to watch. You need to watch. It only had one season. It got canceled. You need to watch Hello, Ladies. 
Ooh. Hello, ladies. All right, what's it on? It's a, it's an old HBO show. Okay. And it's about this like British dude who's in Hollywood. Uh, you you might know him, Stephen Merchant. I think is his name. Sounds familiar. But it only had eight episodes. But it's this hmm. it's this like super dorky Englishman, and he's trying to find his love of his life in Hollywood. Yeah, that seems like it could give me anxiety. Bro, <laughs> it is one of those things. It's like a train. It's like watching a train wreck. Like, imagine, imagine our our boy's little brother trying to spit game in Hollywood. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that oh, we do. <laughs> God, it's that, but for a whole season, bro. Oh. It is honestly. It is a trade wreck to watch, but it's very it's surprisingly good. I was upset that it, it got canceled. I, I think the gentleman, as far as like stuff, it didn't make me cringe like The Office, but I would say the closest show that I can compare to it, and they're, they're completely different styles of shows, but it's just moments where you're just like, how would be Curb Your Enthusiasm? Have you ever seen Curb Your Enthusiasm? Oh my god, dude! It's right. like watching it's Curb exactly Enthusiasm like that, every right. day. It's like, oh like, my god! How did you? How did your brain think that was the right decision yeah. right there? Like, oh, but it's, I dude. First of all, that's what I honestly think. It shouldn't knock the gentleman. It should make it better because they did such a good job of like capturing that and just because there are dumb criminals out there. That, that feeling when you're watching a horror movie, every time the, the girl runs behind the chainsaws instead of running into the the, <laughs> yeah. the room padded and locked to prevent you from getting murdered. Instead of going that to feeling station, is the feeling you're gonna have time. the whole time you're watching the gentleman. Like, are you fucking kidding me? It's like talking at a horror film. That's exactly what the gentleman is. Why would you? What, dude? So I don't. We won't get into Bless too many details. Bro. But when when the the chicken soup brother drops him off and he tells him to leave and because he's trying to steal the lambo right he's, he's trying, trying to steal, to steal the lambo him, and he doesn't and he's like just leave you're you have completed your mission and he doesn't fucking leave for the whole fucking time like the whole time and on top of that he has his car off not the lights off he has his car off and then he ducks like that's gonna help. Oh, bro, <laughs> I I was like, kill him, just kill him, get him out of my life. This dude needs to be dead. And it's funny because you can. Well, see also him. the brother's kind of dumb too, bro. Like he's dumb. He's a drug addict. He no, 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 to... no, no, no. The, the, the main character, the military, Eddie. the military guy. Oh, he didn't, didn't have, he didn't have he's to surround him. He didn't have to save that dude's life, bro. He could have just jetted with the Lambo and you you'd been fine. He wasn't a killer at that point. That's true. That is true. He wasn't a killer at that point. That that comes progressively. He wasn't a killer at that progressively. point. Progressively. Even though he killed somebody. Shh, bro. Even though he killed somebody. He wasn't his natural <laughs> instincts. He was still trying to save people. But, you know, like, it's funny to see people get invested in shows. Because my dad, man, you would have thought he was a nom every time Jimmy was on the screen. Shoot that motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, Dad, you can't just kill off one of the main characters. Like, there's some, he's going to play an important role. He's like, nope, kill him. I'm just like, all right, Dad. Oh, dude, watching that show with your dad must have been hysterical. Because my dad doesn't like stupid, right? That's so, why we're annoyed, but yeah. he's old and yeah. annoyed. You he, know what he I mean? He comes from the school where you just, you know, you drown the dumb baby. You know what I mean? Darwinism. <laughs> so, but yeah, great, great show. 8.4, 8.5. I'm cool with that rating. I highly yeah. recommend people go watch it if they haven't. And go watch well, the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, Jaybird, you should go watch the you movie. You haven't seen the uh, movie, Jaybird? That's, uh, we haven't seen it. Uh, we wanted to watch the show, and then we started watching other shows. But, yeah, it's, we're, we're going to watch it very soon. So, it's, um, it's, Movie came out like five years ago. Yeah, yeah, I, know, I know. We haven't seen it. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, dude, you drop everything you're doing when his movies come out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I hear great things about it. Uh, but speaking of people that uh, are very frustrating, I do want to go into this show that I saw on Peacock. Uh, it's called Apples Never Fall. Uh, it's a series. It's a thriller. Um, it's about a family where the mother goes missing and they're trying to, there's suspicion that it's the dad. Uh, the dad in this character is played by Sam Neill. He is actually the one that is in uh, Jurassic Park, mm -hmm. uh, the first one. Um, mm -hmm. I forget the character's name. Uh, it's, the only reason I recommend the show is because it's 
It's a thriller, and uh, but it's so fucking frustrating. The acting's terrible, and every character is by far like if you think the gentlemen, these characters are stupid, these characters are all stupid. Like, why would you do that? Like, what, what's going on? Um, and um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't really, I don't want to spoil it too much, but like the story's pretty good. It's a great, good thr- thriller to watch. A uh, nice, nice little binge to watch. It, again, yeah, the mother disappears, and they're just trying to figure out who did it. Um, it's got, it's got my girl in it, Allison Brie, dude. Yeah, it's got a fire cast. Jason. Allison Brie. There you go. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's a pretty good cast, man. Um, again, but the acting's kind of terrible. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I, I do recommend watching though. Uh, it, it, I honestly, I think it's something that you might enjoy, Eric. It, it's kind of your style, especially if you like thrillers of like who done it kind of thing. Um, the endings kind of kind of falls off a little bit. Uh, I'd probably give it like a six point five, but it's still a fun watch. I would say you're not selling me here, Jibber. <laughs> six point <laughs> five is one point five above average, Eric. It's worth a watch. I don't yeah, know yeah. about that. Yeah, anything, anything under five, I don't. Bad recommend. acting falls I, off at the end. So I, Chicago Fire. Hey, I don't watch that <laughs> Chicago, for the Chicago fucking rating fire. and for the acting. <laughs> I watch it for the mind numbingness of it, so I could just have sound in the background. So plus, yes, yeah, plus. I wanted to be a fireman when I was growing up. So, so but also so, like, so, so like, right, fire. the title, right? Apples never fall, right? They don't fall far from the tree. Like, you can just kind of tell, like, each each of these characters are in it for themselves, just like their their family members, like their their parents. And it's about the parents and like just how like they all kind of are all just selfish, and like that's kind of what leads to the mom disappearing, pretty much. Um, you find out very. You find out a lot about each of these characters. Each uh, each episode is named after that character's um, after that character, so it follows that character and like what what happened in during before these events came up, right? Uh, of like the mother disappearing, and then you have to try and figure out was it one of them, Who was it somebody it? else? How the mom disappear? So it's very fun to kind of try and predict what goes on. I'm not gonna lie, there's there's a couple times where it threw me off, and then after a while, you kind of figure out what happens. Um, and I she think took that's a trip that's, and never came back. <laughs> yeah, well, she maybe. gone girled everybody. Yeah, it could be like a gone girl. Could be nah, maybe she not. gone girls everybody. I'm sure of it. Women are <laughs> diabolical nowadays. Yeah, but it, it was fun, dude. Like again, if you want something like uh, it's not very not one where you have to be like, oh, I'll really dissect this, you know. But uh, it's, it's it was very entertaining. All right. um, uh, another a show that came out on Netflix that I do want to talk about. Um, I think a few of you guys saw it. I'm not sure if you saw it, Eric. Baby Reindeer on Netflix. I haven't seen it yet. It's in the queue, but I'm yeah. Jermaine, you saw it, right? I haven't seen it. It looks dope. I really want to watch it. It's and I don't I usually don't like those kind of shows. I don't like true crime, nonsense, any of that stuff. But this one actually looks pretty compelling. Yeah, we've and been the fact the- that it's based on a true story and then that chick went on Piers Morgan and gave an interview after this show came out. It was the least convincing thing I ever seen in the history of my life. I was like, Yo. shows how crazy she really is. <laughs> I was like, she is crazy. I was like, I gotta go watch this show, bro. Cause she did it. That I saw the interview with Piers Morgan, and I was like, I don't even see need to see the show. She did it, bro. Yeah. Well, and uh, honestly, it's not uh this show's not about like whether she did it or not. She did oh, she did it for sure. Um <laughs> Um, but it, it just shows like how much of a serial stalker someone can can be, um, and honestly, like he, he bases it more on uh, the person that wrote it, he, and he plays he's the one that actually got stalked. Uh, the main character is the person that actually got stalked from this woman. Obviously, the the woman actress is played by somebody else. Um, I hope so. But he talks about his- <laughs> nah. If you would have hit me nah. up, I would have signed up. Like, yeah, yeah, I did it. She's like, yeah, go. I'll do it for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go, bitch. So it, it's more so like his life events and like why he let this go on for so long. Because it's entertaining. Uh, if you know inter- you're not in danger, it's kind of entertaining. Yeah, entertaining and kind of like his trauma that they like, went on with his life. Eric, dude, I don't even like when my mom touches me and gives me too much attention. Like, fuck out of here. <laughs> Honestly, like that's kind of what it felt like for him. Like it was like he wasn't getting like he was he wanted to be a a, a comedian. He wasn't doing well, so he was getting attention from this person, and uh, he was kind of going through some trauma, which we later find out uh, in the show, uh, which is very disturbing, but also very um, what's the word well, I want to say? Very yeah, very relevant or just kind of like not I want to say relatable, but like you like it kind of helps you understand. 
and you're just like, oh shit, like any, you know, like anyone can go through this and you don't know what people's trauma is and maybe why you tend to like fall for these, for this stalker person. Um, and like towards the end of the episode, it kind of like, kind of goes full circle, which I loved that. I loved how they ended it. Um, but, uh, dude, it, it is a fucking trip. Uh, the way she like messages this dude, like on emails, it's funny because like when they try to go to like different chapters, like, or like a, like a next scene, um, it's just an email that she sent. Cause she sent over a hundred emails a day to him, maybe more. Um, um, but she would like again. misspell her emails to this guy. Cause she didn't have his number. So she would just send him like emails, like fucking raunchy emails, but like she would misspell everything. And um, they would show the emails and like, even like iPhone, she would spell like I P H O N not with an E and like just misspell everything. But like, you understand what she's typing, uh, dude, she was absolutely wild. But uh, it, she also just wanted love, dude. She was lonely. Uh, you kind of feel mm. for her. Like they kind of, they kind of mm. make you feel sorry for her. Mm. In, in a way, dude. Like trust me. Like there's some there's moments when you watch this show, you're like, I kind of feel for her, man. And then other times you're like, yeah, no, nah, she's wild, bro. She's fucking wild. <laughs> Soft. Nah, I don't. I probably won't end up feeling for her. The problem also, is dude, with the hey. guy. You're like, dude, what are you fucking doing, bro? Like, what's no going on? Nice character. Nobody, yeah. nobody ever wants to accept that they're average, so they're always shooting out of their league. Yeah, I, I guess so. But it is phenomenal, man. I that's definitely like a a nine point one for me for sure. Who who? What would it take? And be honest here, fellas. Be honest, because I know what it would take for me. What would it take for you to actually stalk somebody? Like just go that far, like crazy? I could never get there, bro. You you know have, how, I have one criteria. You know how much effort that would take <laughs> and i'm also not that sneaky. i'm a pretty lazy dude like yeah. i'll admit it like there i will i'll be like no i'll do the dishes tomorrow i'll stop you know from a mean? distance you know what i mean like to stalk someone the level of effort you have to put in to stalk someone is just out of this out, out of the question <laughs> like i'm out i'm not the guy i'm never it's training guy. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing because like the way she did she would because he worked at a bar she'd be there every day um, from the moment she got in until he closed, like oh, no, it's already crazy. too much. It's already yeah. too much. No, no, <laughs> that's that. like to, to stock is crazy. And, and would like, you send this have... person a hundred emails a day because you don't have their number, and that person doesn't want to give yourself his self his cell phone number to you or her her cell phone number to you, and oh, just constantly no. like. See, I was thinking stock like drive by the house every once in a while. This this just, just seems like a lot of work. Every once that in a while, is, I mean, that's, that's still pretty not, weird. That's <laughs> that is odd for sure, but that's not stalking, my guy. <laughs> uh never mind. I don't think I could take it to that level. Like, Bro, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a Dude, lot of work. I was just thinking like if, if I met some chick who was a billionaire and like we went on a date and then she dogged me, but I really wanted access to that money, like I might pop up in her life every once in a while to like remind her, hey, I'm still here. But like this just seems like I should watch the show before I make that statement. You're like some, you're like like some salt burn type of dude, right? Uh, I didn't see salt burn. I, I mean, know it's got yeah, a great cast. It's but a little creepy. That that that's what, that's a different what Aaron's too. saying he will do. <laughs> For a Billy dog, that's crazy. Dog. Gonna, that, that type of stalking was like uh like what is it? what do I want to say? It was like planned and like manipulative. This stalking was just like she was just obsessed. You know what I mean? You got a little bit of crazy. I think I'm obsessed with the Philadelphia sports teams. That's breaks my heart. Eric got a little bit crazy in them. Dude. I got a little crazy. In me. I got a little crazy. In me. I do for sure. He's like, I, I'm yeah. driven by someone's house before you. What? <laughs> yeah, I sat outside a window. Bro. No. Oh, I can't. I can't. Nah, I can't. dude. That's it. I can't. I can't. That's gospel in my head now, dude. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> oh, God. That shit was. Really- not a joke like yeah, that. I'd be messing with him too much. Yo, by the way, boys, uh, Jessica Alba's getting a new movie this year. Yeah, it's not Who's getting a new movie this year? Cares. Jessica Alba, bro. Oh, she's gonna be in a new movie this year. She goes killing people. Yo, Jason, Ooh. settle settle something for me, because everybody seems to be upset. Just you brought up Jessica Alba. I don't know how I got all the way to Sydney Sweeney from it, but that's how <laughs> that's where it went. Okay, that's where it went. I don't know why my brain is like this, but settle this for me, Jason, because uh-huh. I think. I think she might be one of the worst actresses I've ever seen in my life. So I cannot stand anything she's in anymore. Like, and they're only putting so her in movies because she's got giant jugs and big bunny her. eyes. He's and her now. no, it, listen, because Hollywood style, look, 
you have to have talent, goddammit. Like, you can't just be attractive and make millions of dollars. She's annoying. Talented. She's not. In the movie that you hated her in, she acted her ass off. I don't think she did. Which movie? Uh, the... Anyone but you? Yeah, there you go. Okay, Glenn, so the if the I'm being completely honest, dude, um, I've never seen Euphoria. Uh, I've never Good, seen don't. Madam, never seen Madam Web. And honestly, I don't know any other stuff that Madam she's Webb in. Madam Web was terrible. Madam Web was god off. I'm just saying she's got nothing. I had fun in Madam else. Web, but because I've read the yeah. comics. But what other movie. what other movies has she been in? I honestly I've never seen her. She in was in Once like Upon a Time in Hollywood. Trash. I haven't seen that. She was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. What what yeah, character? She's, was she? she's one of the girls that uh Oh, but she's not like really in it, right? Like she's not does, does she get a credit? Did she get oh, paid? Oh, here we go. She's in this it. This is yeah, like, watching One Piece all over again. <laughs> it's like it's like Austin Butler was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and he, he just he was just in there for a quick scene. I mean, I can't really give a critique about that. Yeah, you can. You, you can critique that scene. You did a good job. Oh yeah, he did a good job. Sydney Sweeney, dog shit. Piss poor. Right, bro. Just and watch. She was, the, she was one watch of the, uh, the Gypsy Girls, right? Pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, one of okay. one of yeah, uh, but not the main uh, ones. Yeah, one that. of yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. You haven't um, seen Once Upon a Time? No. Uh, I yeah, haven't seen anything. I, oh, like, I wanted to see it. I don't remember what happened, why I didn't see it in theaters, but I obviously didn't see it in theaters. Because you don't want to I sit for four hours now. and just listen to boring-ass dialogue. Is it four it's hours? It's like three hours. It's not four hours. He's crazy. It's not four Dude, it's not three hours movies either. are getting too long nowadays, bro. They really are. Not like if if was an hour forty four minutes. I was in and out, enjoyed my Ooh, ass off damn, watching that movie, that. dude. Speaking of if, man, go ahead, man. So I haven't seen it, but tell me, tell me what you thought about it. I know you got to see it. I know you loved it. You said you highly recommended it. What you like about it? Let me know, bro. Floor is yours. So my favorite movie this year so far was Dune Two, right? Because I thought they did a banging job with Dune Two, mm-hmm. right? It just felt epic. I the I do have complaints with it, and that's why when people say things are flawless, I'm like, really, guys, this is what we're doing. But it's If now. If is my favorite movie. First of all, John Krasinski directed a fire film. Ryan Reynolds and him both act very well in this. The little girl, talented motherfucker. I don't even know her name. She was talented as fuck. Uh, And then the grandma was awesome. Bro, the best way to describe it, it's a minute and 44. It's an hour and 44 minutes, right? If you split that down the middle, it's like... You get 50-50, basically, right? The first 50 minutes is a kid movie. It's fun. It's laughter. It's You're just like, oh, this is this is a good story. Look at all these imaginary friends. They're cool. And then the final 50 minutes are like, hey, you're an adult. Here's how you deal with trauma. Oh, <laughs> That's why we and, have imaginary friends, right? Or something and, like that. Like and Kay- gotta- so Jaybird looked it up. It's Kaylee Fleming. Kaylee Fleming is the little girl who was in that movie. She did a fantastic job. I don't want to spoil it too much. I So I won't. I'm not going to go into any of the details. But that was the best way I could describe it, right? First 45, like if you were to take kids to see that movie, you're going to leave that movie and you'd be like, that was a good movie as an adult, right? Where usually it's like, oh, it was Shrek. You know what I mean? Shrek was all right. But like as an adult, you're like, it's very much more for kids. This one, great story, great acting. It's just, I thought this is my favorite movie. It's going to be, it might be one of like top 25 movies for me. That's how much I love this movie. I I haven't seen it. I will see it. And the way you said it, but Krasinski might make himself just that dude. That's what I said in the chat. He might just make himself that dude, man. Him and Glenn Powell are, and, and are, just doing their thing, bro. Glenn Powell reminds me very much of he's going to end up being like Tom Cruise. I I wanted the other day because you know how Luigi bashed him and said I don't really see it on this podcast, even though he doesn't remember saying that. Um, <laughs> it's recorded. It's recorded. We can go back and find it because I was I was hot because I was I've been on Glenn Powell for a minute now, and the problem is I was I was about to be like Luigi. I've been on Glenn Powell since day one. And then I went to go look at his acting credits. You know this motherfucker was in Spy Kids 3D? Spy Kids 3D. Long like, I've been on that shit, bro. That's I've how been. long he's been acting. I was like, damn, I ain't been on him since day one. <laughs> but I've been on him since like day five. Jaybird and I have, dog. <laughs> like, dude. Spy Kids 3D, bro, with the red and I blue I was glasses, shook, dude. Bro. I was like, what the? F- this dude's been in Hollywood forever. 
He was also in the Dark Knight Rises. I think he was the the. I can't remember what 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 role, but apparently he was in Dark Knight Rises. I don't remember that. Ago. Yeah, I don't remember that. But whatever, he's gonna be a force. He's got just blockbuster after blockbuster coming out. Can't <laughs> wait to see Twisters. It's gonna be lit. Oh, Twisters! Can't wait. I love the first one. I don't care what anybody says, bro. The Twisters first one, Fox, amazing. <laughs> you, this is a pro Twisters uh, a trio right now. One hundred percent. I'm so excited for this next one. It's oh, uh, it's gonna be absolute. What, what's the actor I'm ready, from Twister? Oh, he passed away, right? I thought it was Kevin Bacon. No, no. Uh, is it Kurt Russell? Bacon. No, no, he, no, I thought he passed away. The dude, he just recently passed away. Didn't he? Twister. Patrick uh, Swayze. Bill, Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton. What's his name? I'm looking it yeah, up right Bill, now. Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton. All right. Why? Well, I, I, he I, died in 2017. I just all I want is for Glenn Powell to go. Bro, Bill funny, Paxton died, bro. It's funny because in 2017, I 2017. Yeah. One of our biggest gripes well, is that. Oh, sorry. Hollywood only remakes movies now. Like there's no creativity, but I'm a big fan of going back to the 80s and remaking all remake. Uh, what is it? Tremors, remake that shit with oh, Glenn Powell. Remake Tremors, dude. I'm okay with, with Glenn, that. Just Glenn Powell nah, remake every remaking, 80s fucking if movie. We're remaking anything, dog? Let's do Gremlins. Gremlins with Glenn Powell. <laughs> do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> he said with Glenn Powell. Just Glenn, Glenn Powell, Powell every 80s everything. remake from here on out. Glenn Powell and everything. That's I, what I honestly want. like. It's kind of. Bro. I, haven't been, I haven't crushed. I haven't been obsessed like on a with a dude since like Ryan Reynolds. Like this dude. I, oh, I don't know what it is about Glenn Powell. Already came out. You, but you I saw Glenn. Glenn Powell. You saw Glenn Powell on the beach playing football in in Maverick, and you just got <laughs> horned up for him, huh? Nah, that's Miles Teller, dude. With the with the. I don't Ma- even know how Miles to do Teller, it. Bro. Miles Teller. He's also on the beach, dude. Bro, I know. I know. He's <laughs> dude. I know. No, it's it's just it's just you know. Man Crush Mondays, dude. I didn't realize Even Hit, Hit Man already came out, dude. I've been waiting for this movie to come out. It's already been out. Did you guys know that? What came no, out? It, it didn't come out in El Paso. Hit Which Man. one? No, it oh, came Hit out Man. in 2023, Eric. Oh, it came out in El Paso. <laughs> I think it's on Netflix now, right? It's a Netflix. Oh, no, yeah, that's yeah. why. Hold on. It says 2023 on here, but it releases June 7, 2024. Yeah, dude. All right. Filmed in 2023. There, there we go. No, you, <laughs> that's not how it works. I'm in the same room. I will get up to slap you, bro. <laughs> I'll just fuck with you. Anyway, let's get back to Glenn Powell. Anyways, yeah, so Powell. if <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> if <laughs> Glenn Powell, um, what did you uh, what do you rank if then? It's a pretty high score then. If that's one of your favorite movies, top twenty five ever. Oh, bro, if nine six. Damn, I'm, Ooh, I'm going out of work tomorrow yeah. to watch that shit. Nine six is and it's. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm a prisoner of the moment, which is very – it could very possibly be, right? Like, I have to watch it again for me to, like, adjust the score. But I've left that movie, and I do not text anyone, you have to go see a movie. I text everyone, you have to go see this movie. I don't ever tell anyone, you have to go see a movie. Because I'm that person who's like, I don't think you have to see any movie. Like, I don't think you have to. Like when people when pre- people bring up your cult classic, right? It's a, it's Reservoir Dogs, and someone's like, "Oh, Pulp I fiction. haven't seen that." See, uh, Pulp Fiction, right? I haven't seen that, and somebody's like, "You have to see Pulp Fiction." I don't, no, you don't have to see anything. There are thousands and thousands of movies. You don't have to see anything. I text everyone. I text my parents. I text my brothers. I text the group. I text other people like I, I've sent out like twelve messages of like, "You gotta go watch." So this. if aliens were coming and they were like. We want three movies. If is one of them, <laughs> that's not what I said. Ah, that's the not Lord what he Rings said. trilogy. The dude. Lord of the Rings trilogy. Get <laughs> three of the top ten movies of all time, and they tell one cohesive story for twelve hours. In that twelve hours, I got to figure out how to kill these motherfuckers. Yeah, dude, and it also has to be director's cut. Yeah, for sure. I'm, and I'm doing it for the human race. They're friendly, dude. They just want to see movies. Why are we talking about killing them and shit? Because you don't know. <laughs> this is why. This is why we. I hope we never get invaded by aliens. Because mankind is. Just I hope we do because that would be the war. first time everyone's just like, "Oh yeah, we are people. Let's fight these motherfuckers." Bro. <laughs> you know. You know what? Actually, be pretty smart. Yeah, to like showing them that, like, because right, aliens don't know what movies are. If they see like videos of like monsters and all these like dragons and stuff and like how insane they look and like how impossible they are to kill they're like whoa that's what's down there in earth i don't know if i want to go down there 
Yeah, we could summon we could summon a dead pirate army of skeleton ghosts that fuck you up. Yeah, don't fuck with us, dog. Lord of the Rings, dog. We can do that. That's us. <laughs> they don't yeah, we, yeah, I took down an elephant by myself. My name's Legolas. What's up, dog? <laughs> Huh? Yeah, I could shoot fireballs with my hands. Yeah, I'm a wizard. Can he shoot it with his hand? <laughs> no. Oh, well, like, in the director, what fucking Lord of the Rings, are you watching? The, the director's cut, man. You, if you do not watch the director's cut every Christmas time, are you even a person? Shit, I must not be a person. I don't. I don't. I don't do that. That's 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 a lot. It is a lot. I, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't. The Lord of the Rings movies are master classes. <laughs> Master classes. They're, all right. They're like widely regarded as three of the top top ten films of all time. Uh, best trilogy ever. Facts. And I'm yeah. a Star Wars fan. <laughs> like, yeah, Rush Hour one, one, two, and three. three <laughs> Rush, Hour. Rush Hour one, two, and three. No, it's uh, Rush Hour three. Ruined it, dude. You think so? What are you doing? I don't know. Yeah, there was a little static there. Yeah, sorry, sorry that sorry about that, listeners. Uh, well, anyways, keep it in new movies. Uh, there's a new movie, another new movie that came out that both you guys saw. I didn't have a chance to see it yet. Um, it's about monkeys. Got a one. Planet uh, of the Kingdom, Apes, dog. Kingdom of Planet of the Apes, man. What were you guys' thoughts on that one? Wait till it comes out on Max. That's what Eric says. Um, did you not enjoy it? No, what? it's good. It's good. It, the, the cinematography is cool. They tell a cool story. Um, action's cool. Um, it just... We've seen this before. A lot of times. And I I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. Like I, did, I don't have anything negative to say about the movie. But if unless you got that AMC A1 or A-list, just wait. Don't spend $14.99 to go see this movie. Just wait till it's on max. Enjoy it at home. It's a good movie. It's definitely worth a watch. I definitely recommend watching it. Uh, but to me, it's just like it's it's just getting repetitive with with the monkey movies, man. I, I'd be on that matinee price, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. Fourteen ninety nine. Whatever, I don't know, bro. I pay for the AMC A one, dude. For A-list. <laughs> Who's going at night for that price? No chance. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't really agree. This is. I don't think this is anything like the James Franco trilogy. And I know Jay Franco wasn't in all of them, but that's oh, just in the first one. <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean, bro. I love the, I love those three movies, man. Uh, so this is like, I dude, I think I thought it was, I thought it was good, and from the perspective of like, oh, they're setting something cool up, and you think so? Yeah, I I know why you say that because of the end, but I think it's just to me, I was like, oh, it's just a way for them to like. I don't know, it just feels like they're going to end it with with um, the thought process that one day that's gonna, what what they – you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to spoil it for people that haven't seen I it I can't yet. imagine that they're not making another trilogy. You don't reboot Planet of the Apes for one movie. I you feel like this is going to be a trilogy, yeah. I don't have – I can neither confirm nor deny. It's not like I'm looking up Planet of the Apes, no. like news articles and stuff, so I can't confirm it. But the way it ended, I was just like, yeah, it's setting up for something. Because I, I could see it, I just don't know if they will. Because they split, yeah, they both still exist and they know of each other. And the reveal of what's in the vault, right? When you see the movie Jay Bird, that'll make sense. Yeah. The reveal of what was in the vault was fascinating, yeah. Uh, you know, and the best part was, is you know, it picks up. After the the James Franco trilogy, which is what I will refer, refer to it from yeah. here on, a hundred years <laughs> after after Caesar's reign, yeah, after Caesar's reign, and you are sitting there watching the movie with a ton of questions. Like you're like, are you just not going to explain anything? I think that's what I was upset about. And they don't explain anything. They uh, this they're just like, this is the new world. Like this yeah. is the new world. Figure it out. And you're literally figuring it out. At the same time as the main monkey Noah, which great biblical name, and the the main chick who ends up popping up, right? So they had the main monkey Noah and the main chick trying to figure out this new world at the same time. And they keep alluding to these pockets of things that exist out there. You don't even see them. They just alluded to it. They, all they did was build the world. I, Dude, and then the way that like, I'm excited for the next one. I'll tell you that much. I'm excited for the next one. It looks fantastic. 
So if you don't have a good home setup, seeing it in theaters is banging. But Eric's right. You don't want to pay. Like, I would not pay $14.99. I have a membership. That's why I go see all these movies. <laughs> like, that, that, That's why, uh, yeah, it's a good movie, like I said. And you, I didn't want to get into it because I didn't want to get backlash from it because, oh, you want to get spoon-fed, Eric? But, like, <laughs> they did it. They were, they, I had so many questions. That, and you like, still how the fuck do. did we get here? You still do. Yeah. That's the best that, part. And I think that's why it's it's it hurt my soul. Cause like I just just give me the answers, man. <laughs> just tell me I why think, we're at where we're at. But I think but give it you is the a answers. good movie. Yeah, I think they'll give you the answers like in the second one. I feel like they'll tie stuff in. If you're gonna have a lot of questions at the end of this first one, most likely there's gonna be a trilogy part to this. I I I'll, Nick, I'm gonna go see him. So yeah. I could see, and Eric is one of those persons. Like he doesn't like when you like give him a trivia question. No. He'll just Google the answer. Yeah, don't instead of try try to guess it and then wait for the answer. He'll just Google it right away. Yeah. So like he is very much like I need to know now. Yeah, don't leave me hanging. Like no. <laughs> and when you first start the movie, you have no fucking clue what's going on. You get your bearings a little bit, like forty five minutes in, but you're still like. What are we doing? And then, like, it starts to clear up towards the end. And, and then old girl pulled the whoop-de-whoop on everybody. What a bitch, dude. Everyone pulled the whoop-de-whoop on everybody. That's though. true. Like, that that movie. But like... it does show you that, like, it's crazy because I watched it with my pops. And, of course, my dad wants to get all philosophical with it. And he was like, this just shows you. It's not just human nature, you know, because there's, there's fighting amongst the apes and shit. And he's like, it just shows you it's not human nature. It's just this is what power does to people. I was like. Primal nature. Dad, you're, you're getting real deep into it. Pop. That's that's what was the best part of the movie, yeah. though. But it just shows you like what, what humans are accused of all the time. You see it start happening amongst the apes. Also, a monkey riding a horse. It's pretty thuggish. <laughs> they it's were pretty riding, thuggish. They were yeah. riding horses. I just this? didn't know monkeys couldn't swim. That's crazy to me. I mean... Motherfuckers are scared of water. Like, I'm scared of the dark, bro. I don't have any proof they can't swim. Maybe those I, I was, I, the whole time I was sitting in the movie, I was like, I can't think swim this when I get out of here. Yeah. What do you mean? They got legs and arms. Swim. I, it's like, uh, it has to do with like, you're looking at me like I'm going to answer the question. I don't know if they can know. swim or not. It's your kind. Come on, give me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I eat bananas. That's why he said that, people. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he said it. Uh, that, yeah, that's that, why. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Well, what would you guys, uh, I guess, what would you give it? It sounds like Eric's going to give it like a seven point something. That's what I feel. I would say 7.8. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's higher than me. Mm. I have a very, I have, I have a very strict scale though. Like five is average. If uh, 9.6, right? So <laughs> I love if I, I may be biased. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. No, I'm just kidding. I think that's, that's fair. I probably would have done like seven, six, Seven six. Yeah, it's like a good score. Recommend watching it. I get it. You know, if you don't want to watch it in theater, but just make sure you watch it. If you have some good surround sound, it just, sounds like. Just know that when you watch the movie, you will know nothing. And if you're okay with that, you're gonna enjoy the movie. All right. Fair okay. enough. That yeah, I dude, I thought it was tight. They and they did world building because yeah, the, each each. So basically, like monkeys broke off from each other, and so they ended up becoming tribalized. And they each followed their own like rule, uh, like philosophy of like how you were to live, Ugh. right? And so, like the main character, his tribe, um, you know, they are they from Caesar. They get hawks. They're, yeah, they're they're so bird. They, they're like bird handlers, and yeah. that's like part of their whole like and it's culture. Dumbish. And so they have birds that like they they when they come of age, they go get a hawk egg. And then that they that hawk egg hatches, and that bird bonds with the ape, and then that bird works with you in unison the whole time. Oh, that's cool! It's like, it's like if you're playing a video game, you know what I mean. You you, you get your own BD one, right? You get your own BD one, but it's a hawk. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly how it is. So, yeah. so I I liked all that stuff. I thought it was. I thought that was Assassin's all cool. Creed, now that I think about it, I thought it, I thought it was all dope for sure. Yeah. And it was like this one was about the monkeys, like it was barely about people. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Barely, but you know what happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, look, dude, yeah. no spoilers, dog. You gotta watch the film. No spoilers. <laughs> but like, definitely over a seven five, not an eight. You know, eight eight is a great movie. Nine is one of the best ever. 
So when people be throwing out nines for stuff, I'm like, God, chill. But I do the if. I love the if, dude. I'm watching it for sure. A lot of the weird movies this year have like really like uh, I've really thoroughly enjoyed because I I liked uh, the Book of Clarence way too much. I don't know why I love that movie so much. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I thought they did such a good job with that movie, dude. It was an excellent movie. I thought it was so good. I gave that one a nine one, and I was just like, I went back and thought about it. I was like, yeah, that rating's probably a little too high. That was very much Prisoner of the Moment. But yeah, yeah, we definitely. That happens to us a lot, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was for sure prisoner moment. But it's more like an 8-4, eight, 8-5 eight, 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 type. It's a 9-1 with the soundtrack and 8-5 without the soundtrack. Because <laughs> the music is key to them. Bro, movie. the music is key. The, they, the acting was fantastic. The storytelling, the musical aspect. I love that movie, bro. I loved it. I loved it. It's one of my favorite movies of the year. I just, I just got a kick of, I like, just... The homie just blazing around Jesus. Just, <laughs> Dude, it was such a wild movie. Like, I just, I don't know why, like, that's what stuck with me the most. It's an excellent movie. It's on streaming, You man. haven't seen it, Jason. Go watch it. No, so yeah, I highly it. recommend it. But it's already on why. streaming. Do you know what that one's on, uh, by chance? I think, I think it's, it's on, on Netflix, Amazon. but let me check. Netflix? Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe it's just my childish tendencies, but I couldn't. Just the idea of just blazing around Jesus and the apostles, dude. I, I was just dying laughing, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's on Netflix, big fella. Yeah. yeah, like so. IMDb gives this a five six. Yeah, well, IMDb is retarded, and that's that's crazy to me. I'm so far apart from that. Like, now there is a part of us that we have a little bit of a stand for Lakeith. Not a little bit, dude. A lot of yeah, it. I do. I am a pretty huge stand for Lakeith. Not, not a little bit. It's a, I, I might yeah, stand a little lot, too yeah. hard. <laughs> Dude, the relationship with him and his mom, fantastic. The story of him try like trying to usurp like that like title and power, and then that all coming to roost at the end. And then the dude who plays the who plays this the, the Caesar guy. I yeah. don't remember his name, but yeah. <laughs> I, I know the actor's name, but like yeah. I don't, dude, oh man. It, well, look, it's Tonight. good. It's good. It's very good. Uh and again, I, again, listeners, that is the Book of Clarence on Netflix. Out on Netflix now. Yeah, it's on Netflix now. What else came out this year? That All right. Well, the the final thing I do want to go over is one that uh, I just finished watching personally. Uh, the final season episode just came out last week on Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and that is X Men '97, available on Disney Plus Animation. Um, holy shit, bro! Probably. <laughs> Probably, it's not probably, it is probably the best animation TV series that we, um, that, that I saw this year. And, uh, that being said, Bad Batch came out this year. It's the final season, which I thought was phenomenal ending. I, it was a good ending. I um, liked it. Yeah. 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 To, yeah. For Bad Batch. We, we all got, expected we got, something else. Yeah. We all expected them to die and we got a pretty happy ending. You know, we got to see them age out, which was great. And uh, it kind of shows that we're like, we're probably going to see Omega in the later movies because we see a young uh, young adult of Omega, which was which was beautiful. You kind of almost cried, honestly. Um, well, with that being said, like th- how good that season was to also Invisible, Invincible uh, season 2.5, I guess, the second half of it was also amazing in the way that ended. But it still came no comparison to me personally. To X Men '97, this series was just absolutely phenomenal. What it tackles as far as, because you can still kind of put it to this day of like, uh, you know, people fighting within each other. You know, like uh, whether you be left or right, whether you be, you know, black or white. Like, there's still like people that just don't get along. I know all these like civil rights, right? Like, I think that's why X Men was written during the civil rights movement and stuff like that. And it really X-Men was all that. about that. Yeah, it's all about like gay people not fitting in. You know people of color not fitting in because the X-Men were written kind of like an allegory of like for all that stuff. Is that the right word? Allegory. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know what that, I'm not, honestly, if you ask me what that word means, I couldn't tell you brother. <laughs> uh, yeah. So story, poem, or picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically a moral or political one. Yeah, that's right. Nice. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, dude. Oh my God, amazing. Um, I we uh, Luigi and I already went over the the death of uh, Eric. Have you seen the show? 
I watched the first episode. I'm going to finish it. But go ahead. Okay. I'm not. I'm not somebody who cares that much about spoilers, brother. I lived with you for ten years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've only spoiled like a few things. Like you guys make nah, it sound like cool everything. Every single person I know accuses you of spoiling. So okay, just the main one where Luke Skywalker comes out at the end of season two of Mandalorian. That was my fault. I'll take the blame to that. That's definitely on me. You've done a lot, bro. You've done a lot. Um, I didn't spoil Shutter Island to someone. Someone spoiled that for someone else. That was not me. Whoever said that, that's some bullshit. I didn't even accuse you of that one. That's so funny. You just gave yourself away. Dude, Dude it's been happening it's since high me, school. That this guy me. just pulled up a movie from high school. I was there when it happened, though. Someone ruined it for somebody. I can't remember who it was, and they were pissed. And just because I was there, people like to say, like, oh, well, you were part of that. I was like, well, I didn't. I wasn't the one that ruined it for you. Um, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, dude, like, uh, one of the things that hit me the most was um, uh, Gambit uh, sacrificing himself. Like Spoilers, Jason. <laughs> I already, we already talked about it in this episode, in, in, in this that. in this in this podcast. So, oh, uh, dude, the not Gambit, anything. the Gambit death was so pimp. The Gambit Wait. death was was so pimp. The way he went out, I was like, damn. I was like, I don't want to see him go, but yeah, let's go, <laughs> bitches. I was like, yeah. I do. X Men is. I'm biased. This is. Let, let's get this out of the way now. This is gonna be my favorite show of the year. This was a ten out of ten. Uh, <laughs> Perfection. If, look, I know. I know. I just went on a rant about how you don't give anything a ten, and nothing is flawless. This was goddamn flawless, and I don't want to hear a word from any of you. Uh, no, but when Gavit he supercharges that that tri headed Sentinel on the mutant massacre Genosha, I was just like. Bro, but I was like, wow, just completely like shook because I was like, you killed Gambit. Damn, dude, uh, a couple things that did lose me. So I, I can't give it a 10 out of 10 just because. But uh, again, I, I I don't read the comics, so I'm pretty sure there were following storylines. Um, Obviously, when Storm loses her powers and she's going through like this demon and uh, she's trying to fight to like this. That was demon so sick. That's like a super famous X-Men story. Is it? Yeah. See, I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, so it was, it was very confusing. It was very scary. I liked it, it was but scary. like, I was kind of like, all right, what's going on? Like, well, how does this tie into the story? But I'm pretty sure it's its own X-Men story. Also, I didn't really understand because I don't remember a long time ago of how the season ended. Like, where did Xavier go? Like, did everyone thought he was dead, right? Yeah. Like, so at the, at the end of X-Men, right? So that's why I kind of wanted to watch it myself. So yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't end up watching it because I was watching one piece, but um, at the end of X-Men, X- Xavier is essentially killed at the end of the X-Men show from the, from the nineties, from the nineties. Okay. And what happened? So, and th- th- the fact that where he popped up, if you're an X-Men fan, it was awesome. That was awesome to see. So okay, see, he, that's pops up, like, hmm. he pops up in the Shi'ar empire, right? And the Shi'ar empire is this space uh, one of the one of the main like seven or eight space powers in Marvel's space universe, essentially, and the X Men tie in with them all the time. And Professor X actually marries Lalandra, like that ends up being his wife. So that's the story that they're pulling from. And so when he was quote unquote killed, right? It turns out that they sent him with the Shi'ar into space so that way they can heal him because they they're advanced far more advanced than anything that earth has so they were healing him and while he was there him and lalandra start sharing themselves with each other because they both have psychic powers and uh you know that they fall in love and he was going to become you know essentially king of the king yeah emperor of the shiar and the shiar um they're actually the ones who kidnapped uh, Cyclops's father, and they kidnapped Cyclops and Cyclops and Havoc's father and mother, and they cut. They were there was a, so essentially what it was is their father's uh, mutant name is Corsair, and that is a, a a term for pilots in the military. So he was flying a plane with his family to go take a trip somewhere, and. They only had one parachute. There was a spaceship. It cloaked in where the plane was flying. And so 
to prevent the plane from hitting it, the spaceship was like shit. So they took the, the plane. So the mom straps the parachute on Scott and and tells him to hold tight his brother Alex and shoves him out the plane. And then those two get sucked away and the ship flies off into space. So you, oh, shit. you just so you just think they die. Uh, so it turns out turns out one of the main like Shiar dudes uh, keeps Scott's mother to be his like concubine essentially, and she's pregnant at the time. So she's she's pregnant with the third child that Scott and Alex didn't know about, and Corsair is sold into slavery. And Corsair uh, teams breaks out of the prison to get his wife back and forms the Star Jammers, which is a pirate group of in the X Men universe. Um, and the Star Jammers go and try to get his wife back, and the dude who kept her as a concubine kills her. Uh, kills her, and then whoops corsair's ass again and then so corsair like leaves and he thinks that his child is dead um they keep the child alive because they're technologically advanced and then they birth the child and then they raise the child they sell the child into slavery and so he becomes this like he he hates everything about it and he becomes vulcan you know, mega level mutant, and that eventually leads to the War of Kings storyline, where Vulcan goes toe to toe with Black Bolt, who's the head of the Inhumans. So that can be <laughs> essentially <clears throat> just by them showing that scene of him being in this world could lead up to this. Yeah, and so the and the Shi'ar, if you remember, the Shi'ar were integral in the Dark Phoenix storyline. So in the mm-hmm. original X Men from the nineties when dark Phoenix existed, they go to space right. and the Shi'ar are a part of that as well. So they just brought that <laughs> element back in. It has been such a long time since I, I watched that. Like, I feel like I need to go back. Cause I feel like I missed me like too. a lot of stuff. Me too. I am going to go back <laughs> as well. Uh, but it was so great, man. Um, uh, Magneto, man, like just his present, like well, Magnus, whatever his presence in this whole show is just like, he's not wrong in this at all. He just Magneto. wants to protect his kind, bro. Like, and they're causing like a huge genocide. And like, wouldn't you act the same way if they're killing your people? If they're going directly to your genocide and it's like, ah, fuck these people. I'm trying to protect my own. We tried making Gen- Genosha ourselves within our own land where we can live peacefully, peacefully by ourselves and fuck everybody else. And then for that to happen, like, he's not wrong in like why he felt the way he felt. I really do not think so at all. I love Magneto. Magneto is like one of my my favorite comic book characters ever so like to see him get justified like that was, was awesome there's like there's an awesome like story of that they wrote of magneto when he was growing up in the internment camps there's like a five issue miniseries of it yeah and it's like when he first discovers that he can control metal and and breaks out of the uh the holocaust like the jewish internment camps that yeah that that hitler uh put together so his story is awesome magneto and thanos were both right that's all I have to say. <laughs> I'm pro Magneto. And so what's awesome is the you know how they had signs at the end, Jaybird, where or not at the end, but like so, there were signs that says Magneto is right. Um, right. Um what's awesome is like 20 years later, they end up schisming Wolverine and Cyclops. And cyc- and so so they have like a a break, kind of like how Professor X and Magneto had a break. And then one went evil and one went good. Well, they had a break, and Wolverine was the one who went good. And he started he started the uh, Jean Grey School for Gifted uh, Children. And then uh, Cyclops went the other way and basically started mm-hmm. the Brotherhood. Like, and and they started they started putting up Cyclops was, is right signs, just like how Magneto. That's crazy. So I, I, I just love those like parallels of like the stories, but. For this, like, they're constantly killed. They're persecuted at every turn. They finally get some leg room, right? They finally get sovereignty. They're about to be brought into the UN. And then, boom, they take out the island and kill. Like, And it was the ultimate plan, right? They put all the mutants on this island, right? They flew all the mutants out. And they're like, well, we got them all now. Like, we don't have to go find them now. We could just go blow up this island to kill them, and they sent they sent their weapons, and it, it's a devious plan. But uh, you know, also kudos to Bastion. That's a smart fucking plan, dude. <laughs> yeah, 
And then Rogue going rogue, you know? That was dope. Dude, when she <laughs> snapped. And I love how – so my, my favorite part about the whole show is how pimp they made every character. Right? Like Cyclops <laughs> – Cyclops jumped out of the plane, and I'm a huge Cyclops guy, and I think he gets dragged too much because everyone loves Wolverine, and Wolverine always called him a Boy Scout, right? So everyone's like, Cyclops sucks. Cyclops, sucks. I don't, I don't yeah, agree. I, hero landing. I think, yeah, and he uses the optic blast. He jumps out, no parachute. Jean Grey's flying, Storm's flying, other people are getting flown, and Cyclops is just like Captain America, Captain Americaing his way down to the ground. And I was like, let's go, bro, because. To me, Scott is the best leader in Marvel. Like, eat my ass, Captain America. Cyclops whooped your ass when the Avengers and X-Men went toe-to-toe. Oh. Don't forget. Don't forget Steve, if that's your <laughs> real name. Uh, bro, but that optic blast and landing, it's so small. Such a small detail. And I was just like, that's so sick. That's so <laughs> sick, bro. Gambit, when he blew the blew that thing up, was so sick. Yeah, using his kinetic energy. Like, I thought that was awesome. Uh, the fight scenes with a Nightcrawler were pretty sick. Just like, when you know, he gave and, him the swords? Yeah, dude, that shit was sick, bro. I was, was like, let's was go, dude. Um, I kind of oh. wish they gave uh, uh, Wolverine just a little bit more uh, of a storyline. But I'm sure they will in the second season. Uh, they he really had, wanted he to. Had like, one. Yeah, he did. But, like, I just kind of like a little bit more. But, you know, I, I guess we're used to already him. So, like, they didn't really need to, need to give him too much. They kind of want to let the other character shine, like Jubilee's character, Sunspot. Uh, I thought that was really dope. Um, it's, it's. I yeah. think it's because Wolverine's already like a the biggest star of all those. Well, no, so they. I feel like they didn't need to like touch base on him. We already know his storyline. He, well. he he had the gay storyline though. You didn't, you didn't catch it? <clears throat> oh yeah, with Morph. Yeah. Morph confesses love to him at the end. Yeah, that, I thought that was pretty cool. I did. I actually. I was like, yo, that's actually pretty tight, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like that, dude. Like everything. Um, and then, um, you pointed this out, not me, like towards the end, like just to save the world, right? Everything's going to shambles. They save the world and they disappear. Everyone thinks that they die. And it turns out they're going into some of them are in the past, some of them are in the future. And they hinted at a villain that's probably going to be uh, there for season two, which was a- Apocalypse. I didn't know his name was what's his face. En Saba Nur. En Saba Nur for 300 BC. And 3, you're right. 3, the first, uh, the first mutant ever. Yeah. Right? So Apocalypse is the is widely considered the the first mutant ever. Um, and his was like in ancient Egypt time. And so he was like he's the one responsible for it. And he has like a bunch of technology that was able for them to build the pyramids and build this this sophisticated civilization but so they tease it so uh they end up shipping a bunch of mutants in time at the end of it when they're saving the world right because they've I, actually i don't even know how the time jump happened they'll they'll use some wonky physics to explain it well i'll be like that's not how it works but it's x-men so you just let it happen uh they set gene and scott into the future they meet the Askenasi tribe who have Nate Gray, and Nate Gray is Gene and Scott's son in the future. His name is X Man. Crazy, stupid, powerful. So they're going to deal with future apocalypse. Then you have uh, Rogue, Magneto, Professor X, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Was Beast with them? I think I don't no. Know. Beast, is, yeah, Beast is with them, I think, yeah. So, and then the the other X Men are in the past in three thousand BC, and they run into a young Apocalypse and Savinor. And so, what they're going to do is they're going to tell a story of Apocalypse over three, over three time periods, right? Past, present, yes, future. Present. And it should be sick. I mean, anytime Apocalypse shows up, it's going to be awesome. So, it'll be fascinating to see how they play it. But I do want to say. For those of you diehard X-Men fans, I think they're going Onslaught in maybe season three or at the end of season two. They're already so like you and your brother talked about. Yeah, they're already sowing the seeds for Onslaught. And if don't tell me details about it, but you said they're going Onslaught, which is I'm sure it's a different storyline, right? In the comics. 
if they bring in Onslaught, because it's a 90s storyline on top of it. That's the other reason why me and my brother both are like, yeah, it's for sure. It's for sure going to happen. Uh, no, it's like, if that happens, I'm going to be beyond ecstatic. Well, hell yeah. Um, I guess, what would you rate it then? Uh, Eric, did ten, you watch ten, that? Ten, ten, ten. First episode. I will finish ten, it ten. within oh, the next okay. two weeks. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> 10 out of 9. 10 out of 9. <laughs> yeah, just, it's even better than the highest. Bro, it's to me, it's perfect. To to me, it's perfect. They hit like every awesome X Men storyline. I did was I was just like, damn, you guys burned through them all. They still have a bunch, dude. I'm tripping. Like they have they have a bunch. Like uh, it, it was awesome, man. And the the best part was is like Bastion is such an awesome villain, and he actually comes back later in the comics f- for after Scarlet Witch says no more mutants. And she stops off future mutant births for a few years. He shows back up when the first mutant birth happens and starts hunting that kid down. And he ends up killing Nightcrawler. So that that villain is so awesome. I remember so that uh, that storyline. <laughs> yeah, because that was happening during high school. And I was talking yeah. your ear off about it. I was just like, bro, he punched through Nightcrawler. I was like, they killed Nightcrawler. <laughs> no, no, no. I know. Um... It was kind of a, a nice little uh, teaser of like people like oh missing in action probably deceased. They show Scarlet Witch on the, on those posters. It doesn't, it doesn't say deceased. Did you see what it, it said? It just says she's she's there. It says off world. Yeah. It, oh, it said off world. Yeah. So that off was world. interesting. I was like, what is <laughs> what does that mean? No, but yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because they they show havoc. Right, so havoc is Alex's other. Uh, sorry, uh, his brother, um, Cyclops' brother, Scott's brother. Yeah. They show Dusk. They show Archangels on that list, but he's he he has a he has a thing like missing or unknown. Uh, Colossus and Magic are on Colossus, that list. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, Ice Iceman is on that list. So I didn't see that one. Yeah, so so I dude, I paused it. <laughs> I paused it to look at this list, yeah. dog. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. So it, uh, it seems like we're gonna get them. Uh, that's what, yeah, dude. I was like, let's go, bro. I was, I was, so there's a, I have this like obsession with this Native American X Men who his name is Warpath. Uh-huh. Uh, and he has a brother named Thunderbird as well. Uh, and I loved him so much. And I might be the only person because I always want them to use him <laughs> in X Men comics and X Men shows and stuff. And they never use him. And I'm like, damn, he wasn't on that list. <laughs> I was like, dude, what? We wanted Warpath, dude. Because uh, when they rebooted the X Men team at like around issue 100, that's when they first introduced Wolverine, Nightcrawler. They introduced Sunspot in that. They introduced um, uh, Thunderbird in that. I think it's Thunderbird or it's Warpath. But they introduced like a whole new team of X-Men and those people are there. And Banshee is one of them. And I'm like, why are we using these people? Why? why? It's always the same X-Men. I'm always like, God. And then when they like, they're like, we're going to make our first X Men movie. And they pick the most random, assorted, like, just pick the OG5 X Men and tell that story first and then <laughs> introduce more X Men. Like, uh, y'all uh, be messing up these movies too much. They did uh, show Warpath in uh, X Men Days of Future Past. They did. Yeah. Like, not the best version of it, but, you know, I they, like, they I get it wrong like, sometimes, you know? Yeah, dude. They, they try. Uh, and I've, I have enjoyed all the X-Men movies, but I will not sit here and tell you they're good. <laughs> I will not sit here and tell you they're good, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll say that to you, honestly. Yeah, I've, I'll watch them all, and I'll watch them again because it's the X-Men. But if, if the first one with Hugh Jackman and Halle Berry and then the second one, and like that's about all that's really good. Like The rest of them are kind of like – I like the origin story, the Days of Future. What was it? What's it called? X Men Origins or something? Is that the one where James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender are Magneto and Professor X? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do get a X Men First like, Class, maybe. Uh, X Men First Class. I like that one with a uh, Jennifer J Law as a as a Mystique. Yeah, I thought that yeah. one was pretty cool. 
Uh, dude, so my thing is like I, I I like them all. You know what I mean? But I'm not gonna so Logan, that's correct. You're right. Logan is probably the best one. And then Deadpool. Deadpool. Ooh, Logan. Yeah, Deadpool's Deadpool good. is pretty good. Also, the new mutants I thought was awesome, but everyone the, hated that one. Like a horror reason. one with Anya Taylor Jordan. Yeah, the horror I one. I thought it was cool as fuck. I liked it. Yeah, people hated that one for some reason. But uh it's their nature. Yeah, dude. Especially this, especially like nerds, like when you the nerds who like passionately love this shit, and it's me included. And sometimes I can get wrapped up in it, but like they didn't get it right. We get so serious about it. We get so so serious about it. But what do you think, X Men, Jaybird? What, what's your rating for it? Yeah, I'd give it like a nine point one, maybe higher. Honestly, like I just have to kind of let it soak in. Like I said. Maybe after like knowing these storylines, I'd probably give it a higher score. But again, there's like some stuff like I know there's more stuff to it, so I just kind of have to like know more of the origin side of it. But I, I do that near flawless, man. I loved it. Minus yeah. the the intro song, bro. That that was pretty whack, honestly. <laughs> chill, <laughs> chill, chill, chill. I did <laughs> like that they had like they used a new voice actor actress for Jubilee. Uh, but when they were in the Motendo verse and this and the second copy of Jubilee showed up, it was the original voice. The actress original did, one. Oh, that's cool because she can't do the, the, the young voice anymore. Yeah, I guess. I, I don't know why they recast her or whatever, but they they did. Uh, she was like maybe one of the only ones. Everyone else was pretty much the same cast. So. Yeah, that video game episode was dope. <sighs> Bro, it, it was because what's so funny is Mojo usually sucks them into like a television thing. So for them to uh, modernize it like this – to a video for, game for, for today's generation i was like that's a nice touch yeah. i did kind of i was at first i was like this is mojo just stole arcade's gimmick because there's an, a villain in x-men called arcade who based on his name you can understand that he's a video game villain right so huh. it's like I, I, how's I, he, I was like how are you just gonna rip off mojo like how's mojo just gonna rip off arcade like that but i was like at the end of it i was like nah they did a good job this fun Fair enough, man. Well, all right, man. I think uh, I mean there's some other stuff that I want to go over, but I think uh, we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that. Uh, uh, we'll touch base. I know Luigi's gonna want to talk about it uh, when if I can get him pretty soon. Uh, if not, <laughs> I'll probably see you guys next week. Uh, anything that you guys want to say before we uh, head out? No, appreciate you for having us. No, it was fun. Check out the movie Origin as well. That's it was a pretty fire movie. Hell yeah! Oh, we're gonna watch Furiosa. Any of you guys watching Furiosa this weekend? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Hell yeah! I'm uh, probably catching it Saturday. So uh, you don't have your ticket yet? What a bum! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, no no man. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, uh, going to the river this weekend. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, thanks. Thanks for having. Uh, thanks for uh, being mm -hmm. on the show today, guys. Uh, don't forget to catch uh, Room 303 podcast if you guys are uh, getting into some sports betting. Uh, football's coming soon, so if you guys need some help uh, winning, maybe uh, who's who's the football guy that that wins a lot? I know Eric's the basketball person. Nobody, nobody's the guy that wins anything. We don't win anything. Yeah. The yeah. podcast. If you want to win money, fade us. <laughs> yes, if you want to win money, listen to the podcast motto. Yeah, and just uh, yeah, do the complete opposite. Well, well, other than that. Um, don't forget to check us out on Instagram, uh, revenge underscore of the pod. We're available on X at ROTP boys and on YouTube at revenge of the pod. Uh, other than that, thanks guys. And tune in next week for another episode of revenge of the pod.